okay, it is good for us to be here. Yeah, give me a, a, a chance to say it a little better. Uh, I thank God for you. I thank God that we have an ability to come and worship God, whether it's in a congregational setting or whether it is in our homes. Uh, what's great is that uh, believers can have a mind together in Christ and then worship God together. So I want to admonish to you to play to your strengths. Now, if you have your Bibles, which hopefully you do if you're at home. Look, if you don't have a Bible, I need you to put in the comment section that I don't have a Bible. And somebody, please get that person a Bible who put in the comment section that they don't have a Bible. And if not, you can download the Bible app. But if you need something in your hands, let us know. We don't want anybody to not have a Bible at this point in time in their spiritual walk. And if you don't, then shame on you. You need to have one. Okay, so listen, 1 Corinthians. I need you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And then I, I need you to uh, also in another time to turn to chapters 12, 13, and 14 and read that on your own time because they are very great. They are very good. And you need to know exactly what Paul is telling to the Corinthians because he's telling it to the whole the church and the entire church. And you need to know that so that your mind can receive that and your spirit can receive that. And you can walk in unity, understanding what God has called his church to do, not only then, but in times like today. And so we start off with verse 1, that is, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are diversities of gifts but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Amen. So right now, I need you to know that you need to play to your strengths. In the body of, church, in the body of Christ, there are many different groups and activities and functions of the people, and they don't all do the same things. Now, the reason why this is uh, so uh, uh, apparent and, and, and in need today is because we have a lot of people who go around and uh, they are searching and looking and they are uh, comparing and they're comparing themselves to other people. And so, Without an, a, the proper understanding of how the church functions and, and how uh, the Spirit of God administers gifts, then we will have a very hard time in determining what we ought to do. H have you ever had this question? Here's an example. Have you ever had this question in the last probably few months of what do I do? Oh, Lord, I, I see that on the news and I see these people doing that. What do I do? And you may have even prayed, Lord, what do I do? And you may have even asked a couple of people who've, uh, who, who tried to give you counsel, what do I do in this time? What do I do with, with this, uh, this bad relationship that I'm in? What do I do with, uh, with how I handle people? Like, what do I do? There's so much that is going on. What do I do? So what I've been pressing for the last couple of months here is that if you have an understanding of the hope in the Lord, then you walk in a way of peace that is greater than you could ever imagine. Here's why. Because hope isn't denying the current state that we are in. I'm going to say that again. Hope is not denying the current state that we're in. It is the fuel that keeps us going uh, in the current state that we're in. I'm going to say that again because it was really good to me when I wrote it down. So hope... <laughs> isn't denying the current state that you're in. <laughs> it is the fuel to keep us going in the current state that you're in. What keeps us going when everything else looks so chaotic and in a whirlwind, what keeps us going? It's hope in the Lord. And Psalms 33, 11 says it real crisp and clear. And if you read too fast over, you might miss it. It says the counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all 
generations. That means all generations are under the plan of God. And the counsel of the Lord, when seeking the counsel of the Lord, <clears throat> it stands forever. So it's a solid thing to seek the counsel of the Lord in pursuit of what you ought to do. And so in this conversation, why do spiritual gifts matter? I'll tell you why. <clears throat> First Corinthians, a little further down in 12, in the 26th verse, it says this. And if one member or part, because sometimes member kind of sounds funny since uh, members, congregation, member of a church. But in this particular uh, context, it's talking about a part of a body. And so, you know, the members, you got the members of hands. And so the member is the part. And some uh, translations, it has part. So, and if one member or part suffers, all the members suffer with it. If I... <laughs> If I am hammering up some something at home and, and I stomp my finger with the hammer, then my brain feels that pain. And it's the same way in the body of Christ. All members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. And so if one is honored, we all rejoice because we are all a part of one body. And so... Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And I thank God that he put individually in there because that gives us hope to know that God has something for me. And that doesn't sound selfish when I say that God has something for me because he placed me in, in his plans. He placed me in his body. And I know that I function just as well if I'm a foot as I am the hand because God has placed me there for this purpose. And that purpose is his purpose purpose. Oh, it's going to get even better here in just a second. I'm trying to tell you, look, nothing can stop you from the purpose that God has for you. I need you to write that one down. I didn't, I didn't coin that one. So you might have to put anonymous under that quote there. It is nothing can stop you from the purpose that God has for you. Oh, watch this. Matthew 25, 14 through 30 says that I'm not going to read it, but it just talks about the different talents and the different uh, it's a it's a parable of the talents that the master gave to the different people and, and uh, the servants, to be exact. And that was, you know, the story where the, the uh, I just want to emphasize on the one uh, with the one talent that went and buried it away. But before I get to that, even saying this, nothing can stop you from the purpose that God has for you. I think of how others have manipulated those words into encouraging others to seek purpose before God. And a lot of times because people have taught to seek your purpose before God, that it has discouraged other believers who know that that's not right into seeking their purpose. <laughs> It's going to make sense here in a minute. A lot of people who have this religious spirit will discourage you when talking about purpose because it looks so similar to how the world seeks purpose. <laughs> have you ever thought that maybe the people of the world are seeking purpose because they, deep down, within their heart, within their spirit, they know that there is something deeper than just being here on earth living. And because that purpose and that, that thing that just is throbbing on the inside and it's in your mind and you can't get rid of it because you've been, you're, even your, the very essence of your DNA has been uh, uh, formed and fashioned to have a purpose, people are seeking purpose because it has been ingrained in them. So don't listen to a lot of people who tell you not to seek after the, your purpose. Don't listen to a lot of people who try to tell you that look at, seeking after your purpose is, is wrong. You should, you should just have Jesus and that's it. What life is that where we are living where we just have Jesus and that's it? Now, in the spirit of that statement, that is true. However, having Jesus means <laughs> having purpose. Oh, my goodness, huh? 
Oh, my goodness. But listen, I don't want you to get, uh, you, it's a lot of people gifted. I don't want you to get confused with gifts. That uh, Great gifts don't mean great spirituality. People in the world have gifts, and they have some good gifts, and they have some profitable, profitable gifts. But what does that do, really? What does a, a great gift with, that, that produces great fame or great money actually really do? Even with our spiritual gifts, however, we, we, we need to understand the reliance on God and how our lives and relying on God should be number one in our spiritual gifts. Using our spiritual gifts, we should still be attached to God and reliant upon God. Oh, my goodness. I hope it's making sense to somebody. But stop trying to do it on your own uh, and, and uh, in your own giftedness. Stop trying to do it in your own giftedness. Stop trying to do it with your own talents. And stop trying to do it with your own success. Because you run the risk of you doing something great. Uh, you run the risk of not relying on God because you're so good at it. And a lot of times when people, preachers, I'm going to go ahead and get, get there as well. And a lot of different people in different positions and different places, they have a talent. They can do something really well, but yet they aren't relying on God for it. And that is a very dangerous enemy to the body of Christ. It is a very dangerous enemy to the kingdom of God. It is very dangerous to you, and you should be very aware of it. John 15 and 1. I'm going to tell you why here. John 15 really threw out that, but I'll just start with 1. I'm not going to even read it. John 15 and 1 talks about the vine. The Father is the vine. No, no, no. The fa Jesus is the vine. The Father is the vine dresser. Watch this. The f and, and we can do nothing apart from the vine. So God is the pruner that will cut away the branches that do not bear fruit. Oh, my goodness. And so when we do things that are not attached to God, and to the vine, then we run the risk of not bearing fruit. Remember that parable that I talked about just a, a, a moment ago where the, the servant who was waiting on his turn, and he saw all of the others with all of the different talents that they had collected and accumulated, but yet he was just sitting in line thinking about his excuse, waiting on uh, something to tell God. And his best excuse was that, well, I know that you were, uh, uh, well, the, in the parable, the, uh, the master. Uh, he was like, master, I know that, that you are, are uh, you, you, you reap what you do not sow. So I just, just put it out there until you came back. You see what he told me? No, no, you. The, the least you could have did was put it in the bank and, and allow it to accumulate interest. The least you could do is just do a little bit of it. But he didn't do anything. And so it's the same way. So now we see how the vine dresser chops away the branches that don't produce fruit. Because the branches that don't produce fruit are actually illegitimate branches. There's some branches out there that have been cut off and that are still trying to operate as if they were connected to the vine, but they don't know that they are dying slowly. And they probably won't know it until they have already died and been thrown out to be discarded and, and, and burned away with the other old dead branches. And I don't want that to be you because the very greatest thing about that is that if you remain in the vine, you what? Will. <laughs> you will bear fruit. So it becomes a, a growing up situation. It becomes a learning moment. It becomes a Holy Ghost moment when you understand that, okay, well, I must bear fruit. Okay. I'm connected to the vine. So what do I do? 
It's like a light bulb just comes off in our mind and in our whole and our spirit that just asks the question, okay, well, no, that just tells the statement that, oh boy, oh girl, it's time for you to do something. Oh, I'm connected to the vine. That means, oh, it's 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 a coming to the appointed time where I bear fruit. It's a coin, it's a it's a it's a, a it's it's appointed, it's an appointed time for me now to start walking in what God has called me to. Oh man. So what you do with your gift is a testament to your honor to God. Watch 1 Peter 4.10. 1 Peter 4.10 says that as each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So Us using the ability to use our gift is an honor to God. Why wouldn't you? God God does not want to hear your excuses as to why. And and a lot of times, those excuses are very pitiful. Really? That, That person had an attitude and that's the reason why you stopped? Like, really, like, Somebody says something to you on the wrong day, on a day that, that everyone was saying something bad to you, and it just took that last one person to make you quit. I wonder how those excuses will look when you're standing face to face with God, and you have to, oh my goodness, Going, let's, let's go back to that story again. Listen, oh, I, I, I used to hear people say that if you don't use your gift, you'll lose it. Now, something worse happens. If you don't use your gift, you'll still be stuck with it. And then on the appointed day when you have to stand before the Lord, you're going to have to go and get it from the the back of the house that you buried it in. And then you're going to have to represent it. And then you're going to use your excuse to try to be excused from what God has called you to. And God has told you that if you are connected with me, then you will bear fruit. So why did you believe the lie? I told y'all this will help. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Watch this. It goes, it just keeps going and going. Knowing this enhances our prayer life, people. When we know our purpose, when we know what we have been called to do, when we start using our gifts, when we start walking in what God has called us to, then this enhances our prayer life. It opens it up. It makes it start, reality start taking place where it didn't look like it would happen. It makes God start using you in a newer way than never before. It makes the the, 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 the glory of God manifest in your life like never before so that people will see and people will declare that, man, it is something about them. They are filled with the Spirit of God. They are doing things that I know that their God is the only one that gives them the ability to do that. So what must I do to be saved? That's the type of life that I want to live and that I'm encouraging you to walk into and that you probably didn't know about, but I'm here to tell you today. And so knowing this enhances your prayer life. Have you ever been stuck not knowing what to pray for? Have you ever been frustrated with God because he didn't give you a million dollars for you to stop working? (laughs) Look, look, watch this. So. God always provide for his, provides for his calling. He always provides for his calling. Remember, remember, according to his plan. There's nothing wrong with look, seeking the purpose of God when you're in Christ because his purpose is attached to my purpose. Or my purpose is attached to his purpose because I'm in the vine. Remember, look, if that didn't get you, watch this, Romans 8, 28. You know it. You probably can quote it. But have you ever thought about it in this context? And we know that all things work together for good to those who are called. To those who are called. I'm going to say it one more time. To those who are called according to his purpose. When you are called and you have a gift and you have spiritual gifts that you've been given and you have gifts that you've just been born with, that when you are called Uh, according to his purpose, then whatever you pray for, it will be given to you because you are in line with the Spirit of God. You are in line with the purpose of God, and you are in your purpose. (laughs) 
so oh, look, I, I, I wish I could just say this, but I wrote it down because it's so good. I think I'm just going to put this on a frame. But pursuing purpose is one of the most spiritual things that some people can do. Why? Because it's in the pathway of discovering God. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. The word of God testifies who he is and his purpose illuminates his lordship and walking in it honors God and grows us. That's, that's one of them drop, drop the mic moments right there, but I still got a little bit, little bit more to go. Look, this is great because if you think that you don't have a talent, or you don't know what your talent is. I'm here to declare you that as a believer, each one of you has a spiritual gift. And oh my goodness, spiritual gifts way better because spiritual gifts, like you have to work, like uh, talents, you just gifted with it, you just do what you, but spiritual gifts, they're, they're given to you, they're given by the, the spirit of God as he pleases, and, and you do things that are, are just like way above just being able to, do a gift that leads to, you know, whatever. But when you do things according to the gifts and the plans of God, then it just makes it that much better. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 2, 14 says that, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him. The things that you are gifted with, that God has given you by the Spirit of God, they look foolish to people. So don't even worry about worldly people understanding your giftedness when you start talking and start praying and start giving words of encouragement and you have a word of knowledge that just comes out and, and folks like, where you get that from? They might not, it might look foolishness if you tell them uh, that what you're spiritually gifted at. But it doesn't make it any less great. It doesn't make it any less holy. And it doesn't make it any less powerful when you walk in it. So don't be, don't be alarmed by people not understanding you. Because it says here in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, but the natural man does not receive the spirit, but receive the things of the spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. And can't nobody take them away, according to Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. It says that for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. The gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. So I'm here to declare that every believer has a gift. And if you're not walking in your gift, then... I encourage you to start seeking your purpose and start throwing some things out there, walking, praying to God and asking him and, I, and, and, and getting, uh, uh, speaking and connecting with believers who, have, who have, have experienced this and have, have started to walk and have started to use uh, their giftedness to encourage others and to teach others and watch the, 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 the webs and watch the, the links start matching up and lining up and watch it start to become clearer and clearer to you what you ought to do. And, you, and let me just tell you right now, you might not even like it at first, but then it grows on you. I found myself growing up, growing up in church, I was like, look, I am not going to be a preacher. <laughs> I'm not going to be standing in front of somebody preaching, and then I got the people in the back that are asleep right there. I got the people that are over there on the other side talking because I was the one that was over there on the other side talking. And I'm like, I don't want to be up there while I'm sitting back there talking because I, I have been there talking. And I'm like, I know that can get very annoying to the speaker, but didn't, not, not knowing uh, later on that it doesn't matter when you're declaring the word of God and when you're preaching and when you're teaching, it doesn't matter who's in the audience because if you can look around, it ain't nobody in here. But I'm still excited because when the word of God is, 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 uh, is present and when I am preaching and teaching the word of God, then, then it is something that rises up on the inside of me and it just gives me chills in, even thinking about it. And it, then words just start spewing out and I'm just like, <laughs> it don't even matter. And that's the same way the spiritual gifts that, that God has placed in you will start to be activated and start to be uh, to, to move on the inside of you. And it'll be something that you will not even 
understand at the moment. And it would be something that you were like, well, Lord, no, I said I wasn't, didn't want to preach, but, but I'm, I'm waking up in the middle of dreams while I'm preaching and I'm, I'm waking up uh, uh, praising God and I'm waking up thinking that, man, I need to be teaching the word of God. And I'm waking up thinking that, Lord, use me. And I'm like, oh, where did this come from? I said I wasn't, didn't want to do that. But that's what being attached to the vine does. That's what being a part of God's plan does. Your mind might say that you... <laughs> You don't want to do it, but when you're in the vine, you just start producing, and you start growing, and you start being uh, 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 charged up, and you start being shaken up, and the people around you start being shaken up. That's what the power of God will do. 1 Corinthians 12, 11 says that, but one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. Stop looking at other folks' stuff. Stop looking at other folks' gifts and wanting to be an eyeball when you are a foot. Guess what, guess what even in that, in that, uh, that chapter says? That look, don't, don't think that because you're a foot that you need to be an eye. And don't think that you're an eye that you're better than a foot because if you were an eye and you didn't have any feet, then you couldn't get where you had to go. <laughs> as a matter of fact, if you are one of the parts that people look at as, as uh, high up there and, and, and like everybody wants to be that part, then you really are dependent upon the lower parts. And even the parts that aren't seen are more cherished is what that says and what the, and what the scripture says. Add men? I mean, I mean, what good is it to, for a church to, to be functioning without administration? Pastor can't count up like all that and, 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 and call to, to, to meetings and, and have uh, things organized and, and straight. Everyone has a place. Everyone has a purpose. And when we start uniting, uh, well, what I love about this is that it clears up a lot of the people's arguments about what they want to do as opposed to what the Spirit of God gifts them with. Because the Spirit of God gifts us with certain things because we know that everyone can't be the same thing. What good is it to be an arm just walking around being an arm with no feet to carry it? We have all been called for a specific purpose. And when you find that out, you pursue it with all your might and you start walking in it and you start praying about it. And you watch that the Lord starts answering your prayers because you are pursuing your purpose. You are walking in it and you are functioning according to to his will. So how do I get started using my gifts? Oh my goodness. I, mighty fine that you ask. Let me show you. Let me point you to a scripture. Write it down. Romans 12, 1 through 8. I'm going to go ahead and read it. I got a little time. I thought I had it marked, but I haven't. Romans 12, 1 through 8. Watch this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to stop there, but I want to keep going. Acceptable, acceptable acceptable. What that means is that, look, there are some things that we do and there are some things that we walk in that are not acceptable to God. Remember Cain and Abel. There was one offering that was not acceptable to God because his heart was not in the right place, because his spirit was not in the right place. There are things that you do that you think that you're doing for God, but are not a part of what God has for you. So that means that you need to continue to rely and stay in the vine and relying on God because... There is acceptable and there is not acceptable. And so acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts deferring according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. 
or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And what that is saying is that whatever God has called you to, do it with all your might. Whatever God has called you to, do it and don't try to do the other thing, but do that and do it good. And so that said, that's why I, 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 what do you call it, label this, play to your strengths because God has given you one. It says to each one you have been given. And so what that shows me is that you dedicate. Dedicate your body to the body of Christ and to the Lord, to the Lord. Dedicate your body to the Lord so that you can be ready. Eliminate all things that are going to discourage you, all things that are going to distract you, all things that are going to uh, come in the way of your purpose unto God. Evaluate the things that God has given you and to walk in them with all of your might. And then the last but not least is to activate. Activate in six. It just says to walk out in it. You got to do it. It, it. I think everyone here, if you've ever attended a, a service, then you've been activated. Start walking out in your purpose and activate what God has given you to use. What I see is three categories. I see gifts. And I ask you the question, what has God given you? Second one, I see ministry. What has God put in your heart? And the third one, I see God works, activities, effects, according to which version you, you read. And the question is, what has God put in your hands? And when you ask that question, what has God put in your hands, it should remind you of a story way, way back at the beginning of your Bibles in Exodus 4 and 1, the story of Moses. And God had given Moses a, a command to, or told him to what to do. And Moses was like, ooh, Lord, like, well, okay, I, I'd go and do this, but what do I do? What do I do? What do I do when they, they say, no, God didn't send you? What did God ask him? What is in your hand? <laughs> and Moses replied, a rod. God will use what you have in your hands right now. When he set that thing down, it turned into a serpent. I'm pretty sure that Moses had no idea, no clue that it was going to do that. And it's the same way with you and I. We have no clue what God can do with the things that we have in our hands right now. He set it down and it started doing what it do. You know, in the, in the, uh, in the movie that I used to watch every day, in the old school movie, uh, it raised up and, and it was looking like a little King Cobra. And, and I'd be pretty scared of, of my stick that I've been carrying around walking with through the woods and mountaintops turned into a serpent. God told him, pick it up by its tail. And I've been like, whoa, God, I don't know about that one, but uh, okay. Let your will be done. He picked it up and it turned back into a staff. Listen, when God uses you and the things that you have in your hand turn into something that you didn't expect, God still never leaves you empty-handed. So the things that you, that you do, the things that you walk in, the things that, are, that, you are being used, that, that you are being used by God to do, God will provide for those things because they are in line with his purpose and in line with his will. And so the question there at hand is, will you do what God asks you to do? Mm -hmm.